Good morning, everyone. Happy February. I'm Betsy Coe, and uh, I have with me uh, Hillary Gadsby um, of the England Project and, and others, right, Hillary? Oops, you're muted. Yeah, I'm also a member of the Wales Project. I'm also one of the uh, uh, project coordinators for Wales Project. Um, and Kathy from Minnesota, um, and whomever else maybe wanders in late, um, sort of feels like a sleepy morning. Um, so what we have planned for you this morning, we did have a couple of questions coming in on the G2G thread about this month's session. Um, we're gonna, going to talk about those. Um, and then I, I'm going to do a profile creation, um, both using the old system um, and then as well as then create a second profile showing the, the new profile creation system, which is in beta testing mode right now. And, and if you like it, I'll show you how to toggle between the two so you can use the new system. Um, and I'll upload a photo um, to show, show that process. So that's, that's our plan for today. Um, Hillary, do you want to, we had a question come in um, from some Diane Spencer about um, GEDCOM imports and especially when it's a very large size import, um, the amount, is there, what are the ways to make the cleanup process more efficient? And uh, this is something I can't speak to personally I, because I didn't um, import a, a GEDCOM over to Wikitree, but Hillary has, lucky us, so. Yeah, um, I I imported my own, but I'm I found um, um, uh, some that have been some profiles that have been orphaned. So we, they don't have a profile manager. So if we do anything to them, we're not going to upset a profile manager by changing what they've already put on. Um, now I can share my screen if you're happy for me to do that. All right, let's go to my screen. Right, can you see my screen now? It's all good. Right, fine. Well, this person was imported, as you can see here, Wikitree profile was created through the import of Michael John McCook, familytree.jed, um, in 2011. So it was imported around about, about the same time as I imported my JEDCOM. Um, it's got a little bit of information on there, but not a lot, but... What we can do, we can go to edit. And if you've got the browser extension installed, what you will see in the top there, you can see all these usual like the usual ones, but you also see a little thing called AGC, which is what we use to help clean up. Um, uh, I think it's called automatic GEDCOM cleanup or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a browser extension that was created by Rob Pavey and he um, so that he could clean up some of his GEDCOM um, when he imported them. And it, he's managed to do it so that it will help clear up a lot of the GEDCOMs. Now, as you can see, we've got um, things here that we don't really want there. So if I press this button. We will see what happens to the biography there. Can I ask a, a clarifying question, Hillary? When yeah. you when you said if you have the browser extension installed, do you mean the WikiTree browser extension or, or the AGC browser? I extension? mean, well, you you can have either installed, hmm. but um, because the WikiTree browser extension will do this, mm -hmm. but just the AGC will do it as well, but the Wikitree browser extension has got a lot more that it will do as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm using the Chrome browser, but it will work on some uh, other browsers like um, Firefox. I'm not sure what happens with some of the other browsers um, that people use, but um, yeah. I, I know they are, if it, if it doesn't work on them yet, they are, they are working on the things get to get them working on some of the other browsers that but some of them are more difficult to uh get it working than others but certainly works on the chrome and i think it works on the firefox as well now mm -hmm. it certainly works as the agc 
on both Chrome and Firefox, I mm-hmm. know. But um, the browser extension, I'm not 100% certain because I always use Chrome. So, right. Um, yeah. So what it has done, it's changed to the biography. So we've just got when he was 21, he married whatever, which was what in, is in there. And then it'll put things in research notes so that if there's some kind of issues that have come up, um, when you did the AGC, it will put there. So it's it said that um, it, it it's a query because there were multiple names found in the first name. Well, we should own most of the time we only have one name in that first name. But sometimes if somebody's in some countries, they don't have middle names. They just use everything as their first name. Mm. So mm-hmm. it, it, that is a warning just to make sure so that when you go to do it, if you under you should really be understanding what's the what is required in that country that you're working in and you can um say so so the so instead of um francis f as it was um it just it's just if you go scroll up it's just got francis there and it's just put the f in the middle name so if we find out more information as to what the middle name was then obviously we can complete that at some later time but it is removed a lot of the thing and when we've sorted out what these issues are in the um, research notes we can uh, obviously um, and we're happy with it then we can uh, delete that if we don't need it anymore Um, and then underneath the sources it's put like this came from an ancestry family tree obviously um if the link if you're not not happy that the link works and will and that that can be removed um but if it's not your if it, if if it's not your own import then you might not want to leave that bit uh, you might want to just leave that there and and that so it might help somebody else if uh, it and that and then it will it will automatically put acknowledgments down there and it keeps the name of the jed common that on there so that if it's if things that are linked have got, got unlinked at least you know what, what what who created it and and that it might link up to another profile um it, in in that if you find that there might be other people in the family later on so it, it leaves on there the jedcom thing so that you it, so that, that it, it can be found by the jedcom still so mm. now it's now that's cleaned up it will automatically say that it's been reformatted by the app if I scroll down, you'll be able to see exactly what it says. That's that's a shortened version, mm-hmm. and that. So you can, if if all you've done is just press that button, you can just do that. If you're not happy with what it does, you can go back, press that, and it'll take you back to what you had originally. So if it if it changes it and it removes something that you didn't want removed, you can revert it before. But you have to do that before you try saving anything. If you've saved it, it won't be able to do it. It won't be able to go back. But if you haven't saved it, you can go back and, and that. But since it's not really done a, lo- a great deal, I'm going to put that on there and I'll save it. Now, I know on some of the ones uh, it previously, I don't know whether the, this was just an older version. It sometimes used to put the unsourced template on there, but I noticed it didn't do it for this particular one. Mm-hmm. I have got another one I can um, just quickly show. Yes. Um, this is one in England. So I don't know whether it was just the England ones it was doing it on. And this might have a bit more on it. So I'll try this one out because it looks like it might have some sources on it. Let's have a look. I have another question. So yeah. the colorful um, little box AGC on the left hand side, um, yeah. I, I do have the browser extension, but and AGC, but I'd never seen that. And that's that would be because I don't have a JEDCOM import, right? Yeah, you wouldn't I, see it on your own ones unless you've imported them as a JEDCOM and it. you haven't cleaned them up. Mm-hmm. Um, if I've like I've got plenty of in, of uh, profiles that were originally imported as a JEDCOM, but because they've been cleaned up, I, mm-hmm. the the it won't it won't show Got up. It. It's it's okay. just it, it it's identifying that it's a JEDCOM import. So if I clear up clean up this one, right? Well, this one had some references, so it's created um it's created a reference name there. Um, and it's created it down here as a as a census 
So it's created a lot more on that one than it did on the other one because it actually had some uh, so, uh, source citations on there already that were inline <laughs> citations. So mm -hmm. uh, it's kept it's kept as much as it can. And again, it's done the same thing with hers because she was Gertrude and Gertrude. So this wouldn't come up with an unsource because it's um, it, it, it's got some sources on it itself. And again, it's kept the the acknowledgement there. So now there is a there was a note on there about Wikitree plus a suggestion. Um, I don't know. if Let's have a look. This was oh this was because of the nature of the the way it was before it, it had some span anchors but we might find that once we've done this GEDCOM cleanup that that'll be fixed because of the way that the GEDCOM has been cleaned up so it it it, it some of these early GEDCOMs it had span anchors and span things in and when it cleans it up it removes a lot of those sort of things so well, but what it, exactly. What are span anchors? Um, it, it, it used to have, put the sources down below the sources and reference and mm -hmm. then have some think in the thing that this was source number, whatever, and that it was, had some different coding in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not I, I'm not an expert on coding, but yeah. um, it doesn't it it. it, it it does sometimes come out with that. It's a, it's a, it's a more it's it, I think you need to understand what's going on with um how it creates a GEDCOM or imports a GEDCOM to know a bit, but I don't think there's any in there now. I think it's, but if you are an expert, if you know what you're doing in that particular um, area, you can, we can, offer, I mean, I, I, I do England stuff, so I could probably go in and, and put a better uh, citation oh, in there I, than what I, we've already got and that, yeah. and possibly remove anything that, uh, you know, I put a more up to date one in there um, than maybe than what it's got in there. Or somebody may may have. It's unusual for a GEDCOM that early for them to have um, uh, inline citations. So somebody may have altered it, but it, he's. I think he's done done it now. So that even if somebody's put some inline citations in since it was created, um, you can still use the AGC app on it. Uh, can I ask uh, a question? Yeah. By all uh, means. How does the um, GEDCOM import handle uh, living people? Um, it, you can import uh, living people, but they wouldn't be a they would if you've got somebody that's obviously living, they wouldn't be an orphaned one, or they wouldn't be a. So the only person that would be able to see it would be the person that actually um, imported the GEDCOM anyway. Okay, so. Um, yeah, you know, you wouldn't, Great you time. wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see somebody else's GEDCOM import if it was a living person because they should, they should be, um, the privacy should be too high and and they wouldn't be able to. You can't just orphan those people without some kind of warning that this person is should is such that they'd be living. So, yeah, you know, if you haven't said that they're, they're deceased or put a death date or anything on it or said that they're deceased, then that you're not going to be able to do it. So. Right, so I shall change, commit to that, and I can always come back and uh, alter it at a later stage. And it's, uh, is it deciding it wants, let's save the draft. Sometimes it it goes, sometimes it doesn't like it. <laughs> it's not, it's not playing ball with me today. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just stop screen sharing and then uh, and I'll come back to that one. <laughs> okay, yeah, I would love to see um, the yeah. you know the, the finished product product. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can let's see if we can get it to. Sometimes, sometimes it does this. Oh, it is. It's saving now. So there we are. So, so here we are. We've got biography, research notes with issues to be checked, and then the sources and that. And so it's much nicer than it was before. We can see. A bit more about what we've got there mm -hmm. and if I press that you can see what sources there are because mm -hmm. I've got the browser extension and that on there you can't see the sources until I press the mm -hmm. thing but um yeah so this is well, these were ancestry sources so um because we've got that we could go there but if you've got an ancestry subscription and you use the sorcerer sorcerer extension you can actually get um a better uh, you could use that same 
one and get a better one so that you can actually share a, an image that anybody can see. So um, that would probably be what I would do unless I can get a free a free to access some citation instead, which might be able to for those two. So anyway, I'll stop sharing and we can move over to move to the next thing now. Um, and so what I've done is I put the uh, the link for the free space page for um, HGC in, in the chat there. Um, and if you're not with us um, in real time and can't see the chat, uh, it's it's pretty it should be pretty easy to search um, on on the WikiTree website AGC. Um, and I guess just as a final follow up, Hillary, uh, any thoughts on efficient, the most efficient process to, you know, I don't know how many profiles this person has or in, in her GEDCOM, but how to make it faster is AGC it? What I would say is if you have only um, uh, joined fairly recently, there is a limit to what you can, how big a GEDCOM you can um, import anyway. But mm -hmm. um, if you've already imported it, then as um, and there's not a lot you can do other than uh, do, 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 trying to do the cleanup. If you've not imported or, already, then the best thing is to try and um, import small amounts of GEDCOM so that you can, you know, to break it down a bit before you import it so that you so that you're not having to deal with a lot of profiles before mm -hmm. you can see the results and that and because um, because now they use Jed Compare, which they didn't use when I joined. You you have to make sure that they're not on already on in the tree before you when as you import. So you can't just go and import a whole load of people and and then go and clean them all up. You have to just make sure that they're not already on there and match them up and things. So it it can be a long process if you've got five thousand people in your Jedcom yeah. to go through. So smaller, smaller amounts and just do a, you know, just just do one small branch at a time is much, right. much easier and much more manageable. Yes. Yeah, that's great advice. And yeah. my my um, before coming to WikiTree, I was doing all of my research on ancestry and um, my tree was re relatively small, about 500 people. Um, and I just felt when I came over to WikiTree that I wanted to use that as an opportunity to review what I had done and, and tighten up uh, the research. So that's that's why I, I didn't do a GEDCOM. Um, and, but it, you know, if you, even if you do do AGC, I mean, it, it's sort of, it's a great opportunity to just review everything you've done with a, with a person and, um, you know, our genealogy skills sharpen over time. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, there's things that I've imported that I, as much as possible, you could try and clean them up. But if yeah. I had things in my GEDCOM that I, I was research that somebody else had sent me, and mm -hmm. therefore the only sources I had was somebody else's GEDCOM file, well, that's mm -hmm. not very good when right. um, <laughs> when you're trying to, particularly for the early profiles, when you want to have actual records to support them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And although more and more is coming online, not not everything has come online yet that I would help support these things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, great, um, Kathy. I forgot to ask you, and I'm curious, what uh, do you use outside platforms? Like, are you an Ancestry user or? Do you use uh, family search? What, what's your preference? My preference is uh, Ancestry, and my tree right now is about between five and 10,000. Okay. So I would do uh, what Hillary recommended, just one small yeah. branch at a time. Yep. Great. Because, yeah, Great. it would be a lot to clean up. <laughs> oh, and also one other thought that I had is um, I... I've been talking um, on the re recent live cast about personal categories, um, which is um, something, a category that's linked to your WikiTree ID. And for instance, I, well, let me show you. I'll, I'll go ahead and screen share. Um, share screen. And okay. Um, can can you see my my uh, my screen? Great. Is yes. it big enough? 
Yes. Okay. Um, so these are my personal categories. Um, and um, so I, I can put these on a profile um, so that I can feel like if I don't have time at that exact moment, then I capture them in a list. It's like for instance, here's, here's my list for a rainy day of all my profiles where I need, a, need to craft a bio. Um, or if, if there's a missing record of some sort, um, this is great for connect-a-thons. Um, I've started a list of, of these profiles where I know I can go here and maybe I just added them in, but there's, I know that there's a spouse. I know that there are children and, um, the, you know, I can, I can build that out and increase the person's connection to the tree. Yeah. I've used personal, um, uh, uh, categories because I orphaned some of my um, JEDCOM import some of the more distant people and that and I didn't at the time I didn't have time to sort of clean them all up beforehand so I I put them I put this orphan um, orphaned one with my profile ID and that on so that I could find them and go back and clean them up when I had time as uh, my my watch list was getting out of hand I mean my watch list is nearly always hovering around 5,000 um, it's just unfortunate that I'm trying to get rid of things but um, if I, I've, I've got a lot of living people that I imported um, so I can't, obviously can't get rid of those ones and I like to keep all the direct ancestors and that type of thing so um, but they are really useful the personal categories for being able to go back to things yeah yeah and the uh, so yes if I were importing a JEDCOM, uh, I, I would use this as I, you know, I did, ran AGC and then, you know, I thought, well, there's a, that's kind of a sparse bio. I, I really know that there's more that I can add. And, and I think that the bio feature of Wikitree is, is one of its greatest strengths um, in, in order to, you know, give testimony to people. And then I would just give it the category so I could come back to it and not worry about it for forgetting. So. <laughs> um, so our other question was about um, duplicate uh, suggestions from the system. Um, let me let me look at this person's question. Um, let's see questions. Um, I created a duplicate twice now. Merge them back together. Um, in the JED compare, an individual can have all the rejects and no match is found, yet one shows up after I add my ancestor. Um, and this happens um, sometimes. I checked with Eowyn and she said that sometimes this happens um, even when profiles are manually created. So it's, it's not anything that you did wrong, Beth. Um, it's just you know, just uh, when when the system suggests a duplicate that uh, it hadn't before, just have a look, and um, so that so that we can do our due diligence in making sure there's just that there's just one pro person, one profile per person. So. All right. Um, so shall we go to create some profiles? Um, so I have um, two, two sons of my grand uncle, William Thomas Redwood. Um, now, right now I have, um, oh, I have, let me refresh. Okay. I had um, turned off WikiTree B and um, also, and yeah, and the uh, WikiTree browser extension just to have the most basic look on the profile. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create um, his oldest son with the old system and another son with the, the newer system um, so, you, so that you can see differences. Um, so in, in preparation for this, I did just create a Google Doc so that I can grab, uh, you know, everything easily. So first thing we're going to do is go to edits and we're going to add a child. Um, create, okay, so he is Horace John Redwood, 
uh, his birth date was, uh, you know, I don't have a birth date. I have a baptism date. So I'm going to. Hmm. Have you got a year there? I've got a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know he was the GRO says he was uh, in January, February, March. I mean, so. I usually put before the baptism yeah. date if I don't have an exact date. Yes. So I'll just put 18 March 1920 before this date. He was born in Cardiff. Um, in 1920 is there a better one no the one no. The top, probably. there okay uh death dates death date 27 may 67 certain i did find his probate he passed away in Swindon, Wiltshire. Great. Male. Okay. And I confirm that, yes, this is his mother. Um, and I'm going to use uh, his birth registration. Um, and by the way, these, these citations that you'll see me using were all created through Rob Pavey's uh, sorcerer browser extension, um, which I which I love. <laughs> so create new profile. And I'm still in the um, I'm still in edit mode. So what I'm now going to do, um, well, I'm going to do a couple of things. Um, it's always nice to give a, a little little color to the profile, especially if you don't have a photo. I'm going to give him a sticker to show that he was born in Cardiff in Wales. Um, and then I do have a marriage record um, and I'm going to add him to my to a couple of my categories as well. Let's see, marriage registration, <clears throat> August 1, okay. Um, I'm not going to take the time to do a full-blown biography now. So just going to put that there and say, he married Elizabeth Jane Green in Montrose, Scotland. Am I getting that right? The geography of it? Yes, in Montrose. Um, so you can see that this was um, this was a source citation that um, Sorcerer did for me from Scotland's people um, on all on August 1945. Yes, I, I should spell that out. 1945, and I could do an inline. I will go back and do an inline citation on that. Um, let me. Go ahead and enter CO31. He's going to need profiles created for his wife. And there are three sons that I know about. Um, and also that he's going to need a bio. Um, and then I have a death record. So this is sort of the, the very bare minimum that I, I like a BMD, birth, marriage, and death. And then I feel like I can categorize and and move move away if I need to. So he and okay. So we've got the categories. We've got a sticker, and we can preview it. Um, the, the sticker will show up with his name once we finally saved it. Um, there we go. So we have, um, we've added sources, we've improved the bio, 
Um, and we've categorized. Okay. Can I ask a couple of questions? Ab absolutely, okay. please. Uh, when you uh, check the box for category categorize, that means you added a personal category? Or any category. Um, so I could have also, here, let me go back. Um, I'm, I'm just, I love these personal categories. So I've been talking about them a lot lately. But um, for instance, it would also be very appropriate to give put him in the category for Cardiff. Glamorgan because he was born there. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Um, and then I don't know if there's a category for Swindon, but there should uh, be. Yeah, Swindon, Swindon, Wiltshire. Yeah. So are these are these categories you set up yourself, or some of them other people set up? Yeah, these are higher level categories. Oh, okay. Um, and we can we can look at the category page. Um, but but if you have a hunch, like I I you know, knew that there would be categories for this. You can start typing and the system oh. will give you, you know, the best guesses. So Okay. okay. And one, one other, uh, you mentioned, uh, I don't use any of the uh, extensions. You yes. mentioned yes. the uh, the sort search browser extension. Yes. The, well, the, the sourcer. Uh, oh, sourcer. 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 So let me... Let me show you, let's see. And by the way, Sourcer is so powerful. It, uh, it will work on um, citations from Ancestry, FreeBMD, which is more for British research, uh, for Scotland's people. Um, do you wanna see it in action? Yeah. My, my past, um, Trove, uh, the New Zealand newspapers right. one, the check out papers past. Um, right. Uh, there's quite a lot of sites it works on. <laughs> Obviously, not not a lot of them aren't suitable for necessarily for US research, but it depends what you've got. Um. Mm -hmm. So, since you use Ancestry, let me um, let, let's see. This is our, our other profile to create. Let me go over to Horace. Okay, and what I did have for him that I haven't yet put on the profile is uh, the, his probate record. Um, and as Hillary mentioned before, I mean, if you can find a way to show these um, these records through Family Search, for instance, which would be free, that's that's preferable. But um, what Sorcerer does allow you to do is it, it creates a, a viewing link, so even somebody without an Ancestry subscription will be able to see this. Oh. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go to View for this record. Oh. Okay. All right, there it is. Um, and you want to be on this rather than looking at the record itself. Um, and you'll see that I have this little one in square bracket up here. That's that's my sourcer app. Oh, okay. All I have to do is click it. Now you can see all the options up at the top. It will search for you. As well as well as build um, citations. Um, so what I'll do is I'll build a source citation. It works like in a, in a tenth of a second. It's already saved to my clipboard. So now when I go back to Horace, I'll edit. And let me move you guys over. Okay, uh, this this is probate, so I'll put it last. It already has the uh, the asterisks, and let's see. Um, we can we can preview. Okay, oh, that looks nice. Yeah, and so he'll get uh, you'll get a link. Um, okay. Actually, <laughs> get out of here. That doesn't look right. You know, I always have to. Are you talking about the the spacings yeah, of the line? Because it says Alison Davy Burial. Uh, you're right. It wasn't the record that you went to. <laughs> That's right. Maybe uh, you needed to open it up a bit more. Maybe that was a previous one that you'd done. Yes. 
That's so strange. All right. I'm so glad you caught that. All right. Let's <laughs> <do it> again. <laughs> go it. Uh, I think you have to actually go to the record, don't you? View the record. But I've always... Mm -hmm. Like this. Ah, that's why. When you view that record, it's come to that rather than... It's not the right oh. one. Oh. <laughs> but... Hmm. For some reason. <laughs> yes. Um, but I looked at the probate last night. Okay, Redwood. Uh, where is he? Horace. See, there he is. Yeah. Horace John, correct spouse. So that's, that's an ancestry. Is it, is it an ancestry problem? Hmm. Yeah. <gasps> no, it just, it didn't come up with the right citation for that, You're did it? Really right. Oh, uh, well, anyway... <laughs> Happy, you, see, you see how it's supposed to work? Yes. It's supposed to. If a, person, if a person uses the Chrome browser, can they just Google a uh, source uh, extension and find it? Yes. Yeah. Just okay. go to the Chrome, the Chrome web store. It's free. Oh, okay. um, and it's spelled Sorcerer. A lot yeah. of people say Sorcerer because it's like, <laughs> it's like magic. Yeah. But it's Sorcerer. Um, it's under right. wiki tree it's under the wiki tree extensions if you can just i think you can probably just put in wiki tree and find it in the chrome and okay. in, in the chrome uh, thing for extensions okay thank you yeah. yeah um well i definitely don't want i'm gonna use return to profile delete draft don't save that okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so there's John. Um, so now let's use the other system. Um, so the way that you can, um, if you're if you're curious about testing this out, um, is you can go under my wiki tree to your settings. And then towards the bottom, there will be a section that says miscellaneous settings. And it seems to be already on. Was that Hillary? Was that was that an, was that? I think I think that was the new one that you it were using. Yeah. yeah, it looked like the new one to me. So yeah, maybe you yeah. need to turn something off and do try the I, other one on the other one. I'm, I'm very sorry, everyone. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was the new one. <laughs> All right, yeah. now let's compare it with the old way. Okay, I'm going to toggle that off. Um, to be honest, I, I find them pretty, pretty similar. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a big bump for me at all to go from one method to the other. Um, save settings. I think okay. the one advantage of the new one is that it's so much easier if to un uh, enter the middle names, because instead of scrolling down to find the middle name thing, you can do it in, in order when you're putting the name in. Mm -hmm. That's one of the easy things I find. Mm -hmm. yeah and there's a location and there's a way to sort sort to do location thing as well which you've got on the new on the beta which you haven't got on the original um which if you've got a common surname like smith or jones or something actually mm -hmm. being able to search uh, with a bit more of a location focus is so much easier to find whether you might have a duplicate yeah yeah, and I think there's some, well, we'll see, but I, I think there's a difference with how you identify gender for the person between the yeah. two systems. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go back to uh, Okay. Um, so now we can see this was my, my starting profile to whom I added a child, and there he is, Horace John. Um, one other cool, very helpful feature, and just I'll mention it, Kathy, in case you're not aware. Once you created a profile, this root search is what it'll do is it will take you to this page. It will pre-fill in all your information, and then oh. you can search all these sites. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So back to Horace. We'll go to his father 
and we will edit. And add. Okay. So Alec Redwood. Okay. So yes, you can see that there's no there's no um no middle name field. Um this is the old system. Okay, his birth date. Um he did appear on the 1939 register, so that's helpful. January 5th, 1925. Sure, certain. And then his death date, I did find probate. So um, June 15th, 1989. Certain. Okay, um, no, no close matches. And then here we would add that his middle name is Wyndham. His birth location was Cardiff. No. Nineteen twenty-five. All right, that will do. Uh, his death location was Swindon. <clears throat> we get. Um, the email address would be in the in the case of a living person. Um, if you're creating for someone who's living, um, that way they can receive an email. Um, from WikiTree that a profile has been created for them and um, have the opportunity to become a co-profile manager or transfer it over to them. Um, notes. So now you could, I could enter a biography here. That that's It's just my personal preference that I, I don't do it that way. Um, I just do it in the traditional uh, edit text box. Um, Okay, what do I have for him? I have his birth registration. So there it is. Um, there's the confirming the, the mother add. And so you can see um, one key thing um, with the old system is it takes you to the complete profile, and then you have to go back in and edit. Um, so I have to say with the new system, it's, I'm, I'm never done with just the preliminary information. Um, so it's really nice to have that edit box just remain open. Yeah. Okay. I think it encourages people to add more like the categories and the stickers and things if they know what they want to do. Um, and so it's, uh, to me, I prefer the new system, but <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and we will give him, he gets a Cardiff sticker. Um, we go into edit mode. Um, stickers go underneath the biography. There's that. Um, and then you'll notice when you categorize, that um, it will go above. So uh, let's do need bio, um, and we'll give him Swindon, Wiltshire, and Cardiff. Huh. Okay. All right. Um, and I do have, I don't have any, I haven't yet found any marriage records for him. Um, although he lived to an age where it seems like he might have, have that. So I will keep looking. And there is his death registration. And I did also find probate, um, but I'll add that at a later time. 
Yeah, uh, the probates can be quite useful because sometimes if it if it if it's a name you don't recognise, sometimes it's a child. Um, um, you know, uh, and if it's female, they might have a completely different surname, but this still might be their child yeah. or whatever. And if they don't show up on any of the censuses or they register or whatever, it's uh, that still doesn't mean to say they haven't got any children. So. Right, right. It was strange. You know, I was very hopeful when I saw the probate record that it was going to give the name of a spouse um, like it did for his brother, confirmed. Yeah. Um, this the wife's name but it didn't and nobody on the page had any family listed so the yeah. more recent ones you don't find that they they give they seem to have put less and less in the more recent they've become um so yeah. if you got the older probate records they quite often do give you a lot more like how much they left and who they yeah. left it to but I know with the more recent ones they they've really cut back on what they're and some of it is I think to do with the um the fact that the, there's um people doing research and and on these things to to um and the probate researchers that go out and and get find all the relatives and that um and they seem to have cut back on a lot of that stuff more yeah. recently so. yeah yeah well this was this probate was 1989 whereas his brother yeah. was 67 so yeah 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 can I, I have a question on nicknames is, yes is it yeah. possible to have multiple nicknames for a person yes i've seen that mm -hmm. yeah would you just uh, put them all in the same field i would with a comma with commas okay. separating them. yep thank yeah. you sure of course um okay i think we're ready to say that we added sources, improved the bio, we categorized, and they all get listed in this text box. And there we go. Okay. Um, now, I have a photo to add, although people can always watch Thursday's video to see that. Um, instead, if it's all right with you, Kathy, you get you get the deciding vote. Um, I'd like to show, is it all right to show with the WikiTree browser extension and a little bit of what that can do? Are you interested in that? Oh, yes, definitely. Great. Okay. So what I'm going to now do is um, toggle over, manage my extensions. I, I mentioned that I had turned it off. But now I'm going to turn it on because it does make the page look a little bit different. Okay, like for example, if we go back to Alex and I refresh, Alec, and I refresh, now you see there's extra stuff here. There's um, there's extra stuff, particularly when you're in edit mode, I think. No. Yeah, there is. There's a there's yeah. all that stuff below um, the, uh, the 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 sources and the templates and all that. Yeah, for the, yeah. For the stickers. Yeah. Right, right. So um, let me return without without saving. Um, what I'll do is let me put in the chat. And again, if you're not live, um, you can you can easily find this. Um, here is the Wikitree free space page for the browser extension. So you can grab that, Kathy. Oh. Yeah. Um, Wikitree browser extension is, is vast. Um, and there's no way that I can, um, you know, talk you through everything that you can do. It's super powerful. It's basically an amalgam of other past apps and extensions um, that you will have heard mentioned before, Wikitree B and the H AGC. Uh, our, our wonderful team of programmers and coders found a way to sort of bundle it all. Um, so let's see, I'm on, I'm on the page. Okay, I'm on the browser extension free space page. So let me just show a couple of cool things that it can do. Um, let's see. Um, it does give information on how to install it. So um, cool. you can check there for your, your, your browser of choice. Uh, Safari's still on the way. 
Um, and there are ways, of course, to configure it to make it look exactly the way you would you would like. Um, ways to get help about it. And now here are the features. Um, so it allows you to do um, sort of keystroke actions. So um, say, um, now, are you a Mac or a, a PC person? A PC person. Okay. So I can't, I can't tell you how to do it. However, if you go to more details, which is what I did, um, it gives you, it gives you an idea like on windows, here's the, what you press. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So just, just go to that sub link. Um, so for instance, if I were on my, go back to Alec and I do the control option N, it will take me straight to my navigation page. Oh. Um, and if I, I mean, there's, so there are options for, um, uh, to get a, to go G2G recent activity, um, to pick a random profile, uh, help search, save, edit. So those can, and, you know, if you, if you're not a big fan of, you know, moving your cursor and finding something in a sub menu, these are really nice, nice keys to train your uh, tricks to train your fingers on. Um, there's a one thing that you will see on your. Let me go back to Alec. Okay, under the find menu, apps. Now with the extension, there's a pullover menu where you can easily get to all the apps. That's not that not there without it. So that's definitely worth it. Um, and um, clipboards and notes. So this is one of the mm -hmm. things that um, you see at the top. Oh, Hillary's nodding. Yeah. <laughs> Have you taken advantage of this? I, I use the um, I've used the clipboards and notes um, when I'm uh, trying to collect things for for a profile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so is it? I just started playing with this feature last night. Is it specific to the profile that you're on? Um, no, no. You can. It's okay. specific to the machine you're on because I use it. I use uh, it on my desktop and I use it on my tablet, and I if I save something on my tablet I can only access it on my tablet or I can only access it on my desktop if that's where I've saved it to, to the thing but I can go access it on any Wikitree page on that particular um, thing mm -hmm. so you know if I was on a laptop or something and I had saved things I could go to other pages on Wikitree and and I could still access it. I see and here's what I'm wondering about so Okay, that's what I'm wondering about. So I, so this is how you get it. Uh, or did I do the clipboard? Yes, I did clipboard. I was curious last night. I had testing, testing, testing. Will this still be here if I disable the extension and then come back? So now we know the answer is yes. yes. That's good to know. Um, so yeah, um, this is a, a great way to um, be compact and save yourself from um, post-its all over your workspace or Google Docs, you know, 20 tabs open with notes here and there. Um, so I'm going to be using this. Sure. I've already got a clipboard extension that I use on my computer anyway, because I use it for other things, but it's... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> it's uh it it's it it's it can save a bit but uh yeah right. it keeps it tidy yes yeah um now also up here is something called your extra watch list so mm. the extra watch list is something um where you are not the profile you are neither the profile manager nor on the trusted list so therefore it would not appear on your watch list but you still want to keep an eye on this profile. So um, in my non-wiki tree life, I'm a, a high school band director. So I've been um, working on the profile of John Philip Sousa, the March King. And um, <clears throat> as you can see, he's managed by the Notables Project. 
and it is an open profile, so you know I'm free to to work on it. Um, but he's not on my watch list. So the this allows me to keep an eye on any changes. So if someone comes along tomorrow and and does something, I'll get I'll I'll get a notification about that. Uh, I've got so, six things on my on my extra watch list. Yeah, <laughs> things that I wanted to um, source. I think for a Saturday sourcing sprint, and then I never got the time to do it. But uh, um, they're on the yeah. list. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then, in order to add to your watch list, you would just go here. Um, oh well, you had to be on the profile that you're interested in adding, and then click the plus sign. So um clipboards and notes draft list i haven't used this much have you hillary the um draft list um i don't recall using it i must admit um i don't think i've used it um I don't... oh i know where yeah i i i think i tend to i uh, forget about it <laughs> I know right. it is, but it's there. But I, I tend to forget about it. I don't know whether I've got. It, it just helps you if you've if you've saved something in draft form. It'll uh, it'll tell you uh, whether you want to. You know, I haven't got any drafts. But if I, I if I've got anything that I haven't that I haven't done a final save on, then it, 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 I think it. I don't know how long it saves it for, but it does say it does say, it tell you. Or you've got this draft that you haven't saved. Right. Sort of thing. Right. Yeah. I tend not to. Uh go to bed don't you they say don't go to bed angry i i don't go to bed with an uncommitted draft on wiki tree yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my my mode of operation yeah. um let's see we talked about the extra watch list um the browser extension does add a google search box at the bottom of the page where is it does it um do you know about that, Hillary? Google search box to the bottom of every page. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not sure about that. Um, oh, there is a there is a search with Google on the bottom of the page that I altered. Uh, uh, that I did. Oh, maybe. Did left before it right at the bottom right in, it is on it is on the all and it says all all we, i've got it ticked for all wiki tree pages um um to search all wiki tree pages categories <laughs> images or help pages and i've got okay. it ticked all <laughs> oh maybe so, that's a setting maybe i have to configure that in my settings maybe it wasn't on your settings yeah 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 i did not play with that good point mm. okay um and then uh I, i'll close with this i i think this is super cool this this my menu uh feature okay so you will not see this little uh heading unless you have the browser extension mm -hmm. and what it allows you to do is you can click this is these are all the things that are otherwise you know uh hidden under these headings but if there are ones that you know you're going to go to very frequently, then like I go to my watch list all the time. Um, and uh, well, I go to my profile and uh, I like to see my badges and my connections. Now you'll see that they all have appeared over here. Um, and so that oh. when I close this, now up. Oh, there, there are my, whoops, there are my favorite go-to places. And if I, I can even customize it further, suppose I want to see my connections second, my profile, I can just drag and reorder them. And so I went watch list, connections, badges, profiles, and there. So that's, that's pretty nifty. <laughs> Um, Hillary, do you have favorite things about the browser extension? Um, 
Yeah, I've got my menu set up um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I use on it. Um, I, I, I tend to use a lot of the things in the editing for the editing uh, profiles and things because um, it's it's so much easier to add things like the stickers and uh, the uh, uh, and the temp under the templates and things uh, to to uh, the the profiles and that like like adding the England sticker to a lot of the profiles that I work on. Oh oh, you mean instead of like, so could you say more about that? Uh yeah, I, I've opened I've opened up the um. I can actually I'll share this, shall I? It'll be easiest to screen share this. I love stickers, but I always find them a little bit, <laughs> you know, work intensive to find right. them right. Now. Right. This is the one that I that I changed for that was yes. um uh for in Harwich. So she was born in Harwich, um, Essex. So if I put a space there, so I want the sticker to go there. So you have to get mm -hmm. it in the right place. And if I go to templates and go to add sticker. Um, and then I have to know what it is. So I, it's because it's an England sticker. I could just pop in the first. So it's England sticker that I want. Yeah. And then just select that one. And then I just need to put the county in. Well, it was Essex. So E double S should take. Yeah, it brings up Essex for me. And then what was the what was the place again? Uh, um, Harridge, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I Harwich. think I see where this is going. Yeah. This is brilliant. Yeah. And then you just put update changes and it automatically puts it in for you. If there is yeah. a sticker there, it will put and you could because you can put the, the exact place in there. And it actually puts on there added template England. So I can just um full save that now. So I've added the template now. So that will come up with the um with that sticker on the on the profile now. Woo! <laughs> yes oh I'm so that start is to... one of the things I do like on the of the being able to add much much more e much more easily and the of, yeah. and the bio check is good as well if you've got if you've got a thing there and you're wondering if this if, if there's something there's something that's not right on a profile mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. excellent yeah there's uh, so much in that thing. I was, uh, I, w I, I must admit, I was watching all the um, live casts when they in October when they were doing all the um, uh, work on the WikiTree browser and and they were all collaborating and and that and um, it's so nice to just have to have one on there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, exactly. And and those videos are still up on the WikiTree YouTube channel. Uh, just search for hack. They're called the event was called Hacktober. Fest. Oh. So, yeah. I think they demonstrated. Did, did they demonstrate? I think they demonstrated some of it, didn't they, on the Hacktoberfest? How they were, what they were doing. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to go back now that I've done this, this dive into the browser extension. I'm going to go back and watch those. I did watch mm. them in October, but mm. um, yeah. Well, any um any last questions, Kathy? Well, are you still going to show how to add a photo? Oh yes, <laughs> can add a photo. Correct. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so let's see the photo I have. What is that? Oh, and let me screen share. Okay. Um, the photo I had was. Oh yes. Okay. So um, let me find the ancestors. Okay, so just go to my profile. Yeah, you guys are, let me move you all. Um, profile. And go to, um, by the way, um, the the tabs on your profile on profiles have changed. We now have tree apps, but if you like the traditional view of your family tree, it just just go to ancestors. So let's see. I'm going to Charles Redwood and to Jane Redwood, sister of Daniel. Okay, so. Um, 
I have, uh, I went, I was very lucky to get to go to England this summer and um, a second cousin took me around and he also is a genealogist and has done a lot of research. Um, and he showed me um, the, the house in Chipping Sodbury, uh, Gloucestershire, where this uh, great grand uncle lived and the house is still standing. It's wow. now being used as uh, um, offices for an MP. Uh, so, um, I took a picture. So what I'm going to do is I just click images, um, click to upload it. I have it on my desktop. So there it is. Okay. Um, and this is, um, photo taken. By, let's see, Co. Um, this is the home, former home. So I can, I believe I have, I know this is on the high street. I believe I have the, the actual address. I can go back and I can edit this. Um, if I want to put a specific address, this is in Chipping, Sodbury, Gloucestershire. Um, I am certain the date of the photo was July 6th. Uh, I'm certain. And now I'm going to go ahead and upload it. And there it is. Um, so you can see that it's been added to Daniel Redwood's profile. Um, if if I want to, supposing it was a group photo, um, I could tag it basically to everyone in the photo. So you know you don't want to you don't want to add up add a photo like ten times for ten people. Um, you just add them here. Um, you could also add it to a free space page. Um, I actually will be showing this on the set. Well, on the um, the photo of the month for February, the theme is homes. So this is, I'm going to add it to the free space page for um, February um, photo of the month. Um, so now the one thing that, now we can go back to Daniel. It will, will have made it his profile picture. And I, I don't really want to do that. So if I go to edit and remove as primary, and then, um, well, I guess it's formatting. Okay. And now it's, it's taken it away, but you can still see it along the side. And as I craft a bi biography for him, I also, <laughs> insert it within the bio. So um, when you go back to the image page, um, it will say um, to use inside text. All I would do is I would copy this and I'd be writing my bio and I would say, and here's a photo of where he lived with his sister and nephew between the years of X and X, X and Y. And then I would put that code in the middle of my bio and the photo would appear. Cool. Yeah. Great, so. Okay, right. thank you. I've learned quite a bit. Oh, good, I'm <laughs> glad. Well, I hope, I hope you, let me, let me stop sharing. Um, I hope you come back next month. Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so we do this the first Thursday and the Sunday immediately after every month, but March is different. March, the first Thursday in March is March 2nd, and I'll be at Rift Tech. So, oh. yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do that Sunday, which will be March 5th, and then the Thursday after. So it will still happen. And this will all be detailed in, in the G2G post. Okay, cool. Yeah. I wondered if it was going to change because of Roots Tech. <laughs> yes. Yeah.
<laughs> you know, I only realized that with on a few days ago. Like, oh, uh oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to be at Roots Tech this year. I'm only going to be doing it virtual. I have been twice. So <laughs> I saw the stickers on your page. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. first. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was well, an ambassador. Thank so. you, Hillary. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you very much, everybody. And feel free to send me a message if you have questions. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>